This video is about the so-called gallbladder flush, whether it's a hoax or whether it's a medical cure. It is both for the believer, the practitioner, the one who doesn't know, and the skeptic. I will look at this topic with an open mind. How are we going to settle that question? And it is by pursuing a structured format such as this. Firstly, we will look at gallstone disease. Then we'll try and find a plausible explanation of how this gallbladder flush works. We will look at research evidence of its efficacy. We will explore the dangers associated with it. And if you stick around, we will destroy a big myth around this. The question is whether I'm qualified to answer all these questions. I'm a consultant surgeon with expertise in the field. I have a research PhD in liver disease. So let's go. So here's a cartoon with the liver, the bile tube coming out of it. At the side of the bile tube is a sac-like organ called the gallbladder and the bile tube empties into the bowel. The gallbladder stores bile and when we have something to eat which passes down the stomach over here, the gallbladder squirts down the bile which comes down the bile tube over here and mixes with the food to digest the fat. Let us now draw some gallstones and see what happens. For the gallbladder to work, it needs two important mechanisms. First, it should be able to contract. That's the only way it can squirt the bile out. And the second bit is that this tube, the cystic duct, ought to be open and functional to allow the bile out. Now here I've drawn some stones. And these gallstones are mostly made out of cholesterol or pigment, but mostly are a mix of the two. And gallstones only cause symptoms when they obstruct the outlet to the gallbladder, and that is when patients are in severe pain. And this is typically called biliary colic. This typically lasts for a few minutes to up to six hours. Patients have pain on the right side below the rib cage, which radiates through to the back, and it relents. This is uncomplicated gallstone disease. There is just biliary colic, no other complication, and this goes away because the stone falls back and bile can flow out of the gallbladder. There is research evidence that patients may live happily with the odd attack of biliary colic for years, and 50% over five years may remain symptom free without any treatment. This is an important fact to remember. Now what about complicated gallstone disease? Patients can get inflammation or infection of the gallbladder which typically obstructs the exit to the gallbladder as acute cholecystitis. Stones can fall out of the gallbladder and fall into the bile tube causing excruciating pain as they journey their way out. Nine times out of ten these will pass spontaneously but sometimes infection may ensue called cholangitis and while at the bottom of the bile tube they can incite the organ called the pancreas giving rise to acute pancreatitis, acute gallstone pancreatitis. So in complicated gallstone disease no other natural remedy including gallbladder flush, traditional Chinese medicine or, homeo or homeopathic medicine can work. That would be outright dangerous and don't forget with uncomplicated disease you can live for long periods of time without any problem. Now let's see how gallbladder flush might work. For any traditional medicine to work there can only be two mechanisms. It either dissolves the stones as seen over here or the gallbladder has to squeeze them out through this narrow cystic duct into the main bile duct and then out into the bowel. Now this is slightly problematic for three reasons. Firstly, the drug or the product must cause severe contraction of not only the gallbladder but also the bowel tube. The size of the stone must be small enough to pass through a very narrow cystic duct and that this cystic duct or opening must be open, i.e. this would be an uncomplicated case of gallstones. And finally, the gallstones should not get stuck, unfortunately a common occurrence with normal gallstones, in the bile tube itself. Because if this mechanism were to work in this fashion, then inevitably there would be a lot of pain and a danger of cholangitis and acute pancreatitis whilst the stones are making their way through the main bile duct. Okay, so let's look at research evidence on the efficacy of gallbladder flush to get rid of gallstones. Let's draw some gallstones. And I've done a literature search on the National Library of Medicine, the US, other medical databases, and even Google. And I, and I do not find any published research evidence of efficacy. Now there is a caveat. This is not a question that has been looked at, so not research. And is there a good reason for not doing so? We shall answer that shortly. But what about anecdote? Anecdote is exactly that. Something you hear about, but cannot be examined, cannot be verified. Someone told me, I tried it, my best friend did it, someone on YouTube did it. So unfortunately, there is zero research evidence for the efficacy of this treatment. Okay, now let's look at the dangers. The question is, why has this 
question on gallbladder flush not being studied through clinical research. And the reasons are, as I previously described, the gallbladder has to be functional for this to work. Many a times when there are gallstones, the gallbladder has fibrous tissue and doesn't work as well. The cystic duct has to be patent, and a lot of the times this is not the case. The gallstones have to be of small size to pass through, and then these must not be obstructed in the bile duct, which is not what is commonly observed. For the odd few who do report good effect with this is not generalizable to the by far great majority of the people. Now let's look at the constituents, olive oil, apple juice, herb, and Epsom salt. All of these in large enough amounts are injurious to health. Olive oil will cause diarrhea and Epsom salt in large amounts can trigger acute liver failure. So what does published research tell us about these? Instances have been recorded of acute liver failure and acute pancreatitis being set off, but mostly a disappointment. And I'll tell you why in the end. Profiteering is rife where all sorts of books, products, and natural medicine have been sold at a market which is worth millions and millions of dollars with men and women wearing medical looking uniforms exhorting the benefits of gallbladder flush as well as its health benefits. I strongly urge those with kidney heart liver disease not to try this because of the diarrhea that it invokes which could be seriously injurious to health. A look at the websites of reputable institutions, Mayo Clinic and Johns Hopkins, the first and the second highly ranked hospitals in the US now express caution about the use of liver and gallbladder flush as well as the website WebMD. There is published research about gallstone advice on YouTube. The researchers found that more than half of the publications were misleading and there was no correlation between the popularity of the video and the accuracy of its claim and content. This is not unsurprising. It's mid-busting time as I promised in the beginning of the video and this is something that has puzzled me endlessly. The YouTube is full of pictures of young ladies who has had a liver cleanse and then passed a large number of stones. Is that true? Can you really pass gallstones just by having a liver cleanse like that? Let's look into that. This is a publication from the medical journal Lancet, which is one of the most prestigious medical journals. It contains a case of a 40-year-old woman who was referred after a three-month history of severe right-sided pain and who had gallstones. She had undergone a liver cleansing regime on the advice of a herbalist, and she produced these green stones in her stool, which she kept in the fridge and then brought to the attention of the surgical team. They examined these stones and it revealed that they lacked any crystalline structure melted to an oily green liquid after 10 minutes at 40 degrees centigrade and contained no cholesterol, bilirubin or calcium by established wet chemical methods. So these are not gold stones at all. They then further examined these stones for its constituents and they published how these stones could have formed inside the gut by a combination of what the patient took through various chemical reaction resulting in so-called soap stones. The real gallstones that the patient had was removed at the time of surgery. They searched the internet and they found that there are a lot of health web websites which promote so-called gallbladder flushing or liver cleansing regimes. Through this publication they want to clarify that the flushing regimes for expelling gallstones is a myth. This is a damning indictment. And lastly, I would add, even for the odd few where this produces the result they want, the factory, the gallbladder is still there and it will continue to produce gallstones. I hope this video has been of some use. If you have any constructive comments, please do share.